Hey slash x slash let me tell you a story. Pick is a map of the place I was staying, just to give you a better feel for what's going on. The green is all forest and the yellow is grassy areas. The house was on a hill and the brown stuff is a path. This is my cousin's property where I visited recently. Shit went down. Never going back. B23. Go visit cousin in the country for three days. He has a house with a small lake, or large pond, or whatever, big enough to swim in. His property also has a decent amount of thick forest. Forest surrounds the lake, his house, and this largish field area. Field has a shed filled with junk. It's a pretty cool place. I used to go as a young kid. Basically spent every summer there of my life up until I was 12. Suddenly stopped going and whenever I told my mom I wanted to go back she just said no. Gave no reason, just no. Eventually give up and move on. But a few weeks ago I got a call from my cousin. Hey I haven't seen you in forever, come visit sometime. Why not? My cousin tells me I can bring a friend or two if I want, but he says he's inviting some friends over too. His parents are on a cruise in the Caribbean apparently and he's house sitting. He's older than me, 25 or 26 I think. So go visit with buddies of mine, Mark and Aiden. Meet cousin, Luke, and his five friends, Chris, Mary, Henry, Jesse, girl, and Jasper. Greater than eight of us in total. Me and my buddies arrive around one and unpack our stuff. Greeted with weed and beer. Cool, all my cousin's friends seem like chill people. Eventually settle in. Head out to the lake to swim until it's about 3 or 4. While I'm swimming I have this bad feeling, as if I'm being washed. Wave it off, enjoy girls in bikinis and the booze. Cousin has a water trampoline for the lake. Also a paddle boat. Dig around all afternoon until about 6. Cousin tells us it's time to wrap it up. PSH, party pooper we all say. Cousin just waves it off and even though we argue he makes us head up to the house. We eat some pasta for dinner and it's like 7 now. Beautiful summer night, I want to watch the sunset. Grab a six pack and head outside. Where are you going Anon, my cousin asks. Oh, just outside, it's a nice night I say. Cousin looks nervous. It about that Anon, there's bears outside, they get pretty close to the house. Well if that happens he'll just come inside I tell him. Still looks worried. Let's me go. Chill outside for a little bit. Cousin comes outside after a while. Brings gun with him. Lilwood. WTF you need this for? I ask. Me being raised in the suburbs I've never touched a gun before, let alone seen a real one. You know, just in case. Sit outside for a while, the sun is gone and it starts to get dark. Cousin insists we go inside. I give in. He locks the door behind us, but I notice there's a huge fucking dead bolt on the door. Like really big, unreasonably big. Greater than three other smaller locks on the door as well. Whatever I guess they're just secure. Head upstairs and chill with everyone else. They're watching a movie and smoking some weed. Take a seat next to Mary, because she's hot, and I'm trying to get my dick wet. We chat it up, she's cool, and drunk, and hot. Easy pickings boys. She suggests we go somewhere quieter. Head over to a bedroom on the first floor. Start making out, get some at foy action, she's topless. She suddenly stops. What's wrong? I ask her. She says nothing and just stares behind me kinda like she's looking for something. Suddenly she screams. Loudest fucking scream I've ever heard. Runs out of the fucking room topless. I look behind me, nothing there. WTF, am I that repulsive? Grab her shirt and bra and follow her out. She's sitting in the middle of the living room in the fetal position. I give her the shirt and shit she's putting it back on as everyone else runs downstairs 
What's wrong I ask. What's wrong WTF was that screaming everyone else asks. She doesn't talk for a few minutes. People start saying I Bill Cosby'd her. I'm like nope STF you. She finally speaks up. Thanks bitch now tell them I didn't struggle snuggle you. What she says clears my name, but also fucking ruins my vacation. While we were hooking up, I told you it was consensual, I looked out the window and thought I saw something, but because the light was on I couldn't really see out the window all that well she says. Makes sense. All of a sudden someone's face gets real close to the window, except their face was all wrong. What? Their eyes were all sunken in and their nose seemed really broken. Everyone is quiet as fuck listening to her. And their mouth and just hanging open, almost crooked, like they had a dislocated jaw or something. Everyone starts freaking out, OMG there's creepers watching us, WTF. Ew gross he sounded ugly. Some people think she's kidding. It was probably just a nonce reflection Aiden says. LOL her dir. I'm being fucking serious right now you fucks Mary snaps at him I know what I fucking saw. All this time my cousin is just quiet. Hasn't said a word yet. I ask him what he thinks, everyone shuts up to listen to him. I think we shouldn't worry about it he says. The fucker was wrong and he knew it. Mary gets mad at people for not taking her seriously, but eventually calms down. We all settle down and sleep upstairs in the big room with the TV. The rest of the night is uneventful. Day 2. Wake up, still a little weirded out from last night's events. Whatever, probably just some weirdo, won't happen again. Start out the day just fine, eat breakfast, go for a morning hike with everyone, except Mary who left that morning in her own car. Smoke a little, head back all the while feeling awfully paranoid that someone was watching us. Start swimming. Sitting on the water trampoline. Look out into the forest. See someone standing there. They're pretty far away so I can't see who it is. I wave, they wave back but the wave seemed real sluggish, almost slow motion. Look back at group, there's only five of us total at the lake. Me, Aiden, Luke, Mark, and Chris. Everyone else went to smoke, I assume it's one of them. Look back at where the person was, they're gone now. I guess they moved on. Everyone who was gone suddenly shows up. How'd you guys get around the lake so quickly? I ask them. They're confused, says they were just in the house eating. What? I waved at you though. Dude what are you talking about we've all been inside. Okay what? Cousin Luke looks worried. He looks out into the forest. I'm weirded out now. Level 5 nope alert right now. Something's up. I get off water tramp and ask my cousin what's up. Not right now, I'll tell you later. Okay whatever. It's about 6 or 7 pm. Meanwhile Chris Henry and Jesse go out to the shed to get a shovel. They want to dig a hole so we can have a fire pit tonight. Gone for a while. Suddenly hear a screech from the forest. More screeches. Luke tells us all to go the fuck inside now. We all nope our way to the house. What the fuck is going on? He says nothing at first. They aren't supposed to come out during the day he says to himself they're breaking the rules. WTF are you saying? hear a banging at the door. It's Chris screaming at the top of his lungs. Open the fucking door Jesus Christ you cunts open the door. Luke opens the door and Chris barges in. Henry and Jesse know where to be found. Where are Henry and Jesse? Luke asks. Fuck if eat no I got separated and these things fucking start chasing me. Luke goes around the house and locks all the doors and all the windows and closes all the shutters. We all go upstairs. Look out window down the hill. See dozens of figures walking around near the edge of the woods. It wasn't even walking, it was more like they were jittering their way around. Like they were having seizures while walking. Even more standing near the shed on the other side of the woods. 
Just standing there. What the fuck Aiden says? What? I ask, but I don't need him to answer. Henry and Jesse are on the path on their way from the cabin, as if nothing is wrong. They're just fucking walking really slow. Walk up to the door and try to get in. Start knocking. Shouldn't we let them in? Still knocking, non-stop. Luke is silent for a moment like he's seen this before but doesn't want to tell us. It isn't them he says. WTF. What do you mean it isn't them? Still knocking, louder now, more than just one hand, like a bunch of people knocking together. That's not them. It looks like them but it isn't. We need to fucking leave. We wait until morning, but no one sleeps. Knocking all throughout the night. Endless screeching from everywhere. Eventually screeching dies down. Knocking fades too by the morning. But Henry and Jesse are still there. I look outside from the window above the front door. They're both staring straight at the door. Suddenly the both look up right at me. Their eyes look gone, just deep empty sockets. Jaws are slack. Fucking stare into my soul. There aren't eyes but I can still feel them looking, even after I leave the window. I will never forget that look. Around 9 am Luke decides it's time to go. Luke grabs his gun, gives us all a golf club that belongs to his dad. We're all just going to run to the cars, don't look around just go. He tells me to drive the Range Rover and Chris is going to drive the sedan. After designating where everyone is going to sit we all pile up by the back door. Luke opens it slightly, looks around, then starts booking it to the car. We all follow. Get in the cars. See Henry and Jesse running after us, but they aren't running. Almost like they're sliding across the grass while standing up. Like puppets on strings. We get in the car, Jasper won't get into the car because he doesn't want to leave them behind. Luke fucking punches him in the face and throws him into the passenger seat of the sedan. We drive off, Henry and Jesse chasing us. Loud screeching from every fucking where. They almost drown out the sound of the engine. The screeches sound like what I imagine a man bat would sound like. I see figures on the side of the road, and occasionally I see faces. They're exactly what Mary described. I wish I could forget them. They look gross, deformed, and improper. They all had slack jaws, but one side of the jaw usually hung lower than the other. Their shoulders were lopsided, their stance, and crooked, and their legs seemed broken and backwards, like a grasshopper's legs. Kept seeing them until we left the foresty area. Drive 90, all the way home.